the way I want to think about it is like, what can we do? So we're talking about the unicorns, but but I think it's more about how can we create the ecosystem and how can we create the um, the kind of breeding routes for those unicorns. And if they if they happen, that's great. But I think we can also uh, be happy with with companies who are worth uh, half a billion euros. Um, and and I think there's there's a lot of uh, things we can cover, but I want to focus on three areas, and there's one bonus area if we have time, uh, but the first one is really about the, the people. So I think what I want to talk about, and I think there's there's specifically three or four people who, I, who would have a good perspective on this here, is how, how, how does it happen that we have folks who, who are ambitious enough, who have the skills, and they, do they have obviously a lot of luck to create those large companies uh, from, from zero, and what can we do to have more of those folks, is, is there is there a rule? Is there can we recognize them? Um, and I think we, we maybe start with Maciek, who who is now second time on the board, on with a company uh, that founders started, got to I would say maybe Polish unicorn, so like a quarter a billion, twice. So how how do you describe um, another Maciek who's who's one of those founders? And, and is, is, there a, is there a pattern? How do, you, how do you look for those people? And then, I guess, uh, Paul, this is pretty much your day job, I would say. So maybe you can also share something. Yeah, I think maybe I go a little bit into, into history of the region. And I think, you know, I see some faces here um, of successful entrepreneurs. Uh, and, and I think one observation after being here for 20 years trying to do business investing, um, I think the change of the system has created, and, and when we liberated ourselves, I think that has just led people to uh, to unlock their entrepreneurial skills. And I think that sits somewhere in the DNA of, of a transformation. It starts with my generation and previous generations, but I think it cascaded down into uh, into the regional uh, characteristics. So I've been in, uh, you know, I've been trying to invest or investing in Central Eastern Europe for 15 years, and I've seen a lot of people who are just trying very, very hard. They do remember how it looked before. So that's uh, that's the history. And it starts with this, uh, with this spark. I think I've seen, I've tried to look for data to prove it to my colleagues from uh, from from global perspective. And once I found the data, I don't remember it. But I will kick off on that note. I think there is uh, a special predestination uh, in in this part of the region that goes back to to history. Paul, you coming okay. from different angle. I mean, for me, what's exciting is, I mean, so I'll tell you my history with working in Poland. So I actually had a game studio in Poland in the late 90s. Um, and little people know that actually we built games for like Game Boy and PlayStation, Nintendo, stuff like this. But no one knew because people perceived this as an American company because I was based in the United States, even though we had a big Polish team. And I'd say for the last, you know, like from like 90s to I'd say to like mid 2010s, a lot of people were just happy doing that. They're like, hey, I'm working for a, you know, the Googles, or I'm working for an American company, and I'm gonna make awesome stuff, like world quality. I mean, like these guys are as good, if not better than anybody in the world, but they didn't have the confidence necessarily to go out there and say, hey, we're gonna build a global company. I'd say in the last five, six years, it's really changed. Like I see a lot of these young entrepreneurs and they're like, hey, my colleague who works at Google in America, He's starting a company. It's becoming, you know, half a billion, billion dollar company. Or my friend was, you know, employee number one at XYZ company. And so you're seeing more and more of these guys and girls and saying, hey, I should do that, right? So one way the entrepreneurs starting to kind of realize that this is an opportunity. And two, I'd say also in the last five years, there's been more money coming into the country. So, uh, or even people who made money inside the country are now putting money into the companies. What makes Silicon Valley so awesome is that we invest in each other. So when I was a, you know, stupid 21 year old kid, some guys like, hey. Here's 50,000 bucks and here's 100K. And I was able to put together a couple hundred thousand dollars and start a company. In Poland, that really wasn't the case or it was an extreme edge case that happened. But now I'm seeing amazing people, like a lot of people on this panel, putting their own money or their friend's money. And, and once you start putting money alongside these you know, young people who are becoming brave enough to start companies, that's when things really happen. And that's happening now. And that's what makes me excited. And that's why I started a fund there. And I'm you know, putting my money where my mouth is. So this will be a great segue to, to our second point, which, which I want to talk about funding. But I want to just go back a little bit because you didn't really answer the question. Like, <laughs> okay, sorry. The question yeah, is, so we have, you know, in the region, uh, somebody may, may have the numbers. There's, there's a, a good number of million people in the region, right? Yeah. And not, obviously not all of them are capable or they don't want to or they don't have the skills to, to become the founder of a company who could potentially become a global you know, unicorn. Is, is how do we find those folks? Like then we, you know, sure we have to fund, you know, fund them. 
them. But like, what's the first step? Is this is this all around you know the transformation where we started, you know, thinking this way, or there's more that we can do, or is it also different in other countries because we've covered Poland a little yeah, bit more? I, I could talk to this pretty well. Um, so I've actually advised a bunch of governments on how to kind of create ecosystems, and so no, like there's equally smart people everywhere in the world. The biggest problem is actually making it an option, right? So it's not about finding the people, they'll find themselves, right? But you have to say, hey, being an entrepreneur is cool. It's a legit life path, right? I know my parents were pissed as hell, right? Good Polish parents saying, what the hell are you doing starting a company? You'd never, you're dumb. You should go work at some big company. So I did for six months and I said, fuck off. And I started a company, right? But like, we need to say, we need to promote these amazing all-stars, right? We need to know that this is a path. Hey, this guy built a huge company, 500 million, 300 million, whatever the price is, he's had $7 billion. This is actually a huge opportunity for you and you could do way more for yourself and for your country or your region by going this way. So I think it's more about promoting and it's, yeah, so good press. I think the government has to talk about this too. So this is all the way from the top, right? So every president of every country should say, this is a cool thing and this is how we make ourselves bigger. So you have to do that. And then also like the community, like everyone has to kind of cheer these people out instead of like, I know there's, you know, a lot of like uh, jealousy and hating on people. Fuck that shit. No, you gotta support those guys and then everyone's gonna do well. Maciek, you did this transition, right? You spent a lot of time in, in corporate environments and now I don't know if you can call the heart the startup, but it's definitely not a corporation, is it? No, it's not a corporation, but uh, I also have a take on, on what you guys were mentioning because uh, I feel terrible if you think that you know a, a good entrepreneur that will build a, build a, a, a unicorn has to be a young guy who's starting a career uh, with a company. It's the best moment to start, by the way, because uh, you, you risk nothing or you risk little. Uh, the, the, grow, the, the older you become, the more you risk. It takes a lot of courage to leave a good uh, corporate uh, job uh, and, uh, and start a company. But that's also a lot of people uh, do this at the, at the age when they become a little bit of uh, uh, secure after a while, so the mid 40s. And that's what I did. I left the uh, corporate world and uh, to, to set up uh, a business at the heart. And uh, so I hope there is hopeful people who are 40 and 50 and so on. So it's, uh, don't say it's just the, the young guys. That's a very so, good point. Uh, so, so that's one. Uh, that's one. Uh, and by the way, uh, in some environments like right now in Poland, uh, you will see that there are a lot of mergers and acquisitions. There are banks being sold and bought. Uh, that means that there are bo more board members uh, uh, than board positions. And there is, that creates a lot of interesting entrepreneurial spirits uh, uh, hanging around the market. Uh, and we work with such people as well. Uh, because if you work for a corporation for a very long time, for 20, 30 years, there's always a couple of ideas in your pocket that you cannot realize when you work there because of different reasons. Uh, so we work with such people as well. So to your question, uh, at the heart, uh, we work different. Uh, uh, we we not so much focused on creating or building uh, unicorns. I always say we uh, we rather create a farm of rabbits, and maybe some of them will become later on uh, uh, unicorns. And uh, uh, the 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 way we do it, we work with corporations because if you look at uh, if young entrepreneurs, uh, they collect money from the market from individual uh, individual investors or from VCs. Uh, corporations have uh, have abilities uh, to scale things faster and that's what we do and the talent we're looking for is usually somewhere in between the two worlds uh, and uh, very often uh, a good leader doesn't have to be this young entrepreneur a good leader will be a hungry person coming from the corporate world really tired uh, with you know uh, uh, being uh, uh, being squeezed in this corporate environment and uh, these people uh, uh, make really good CEOs I, you, you're, you're great panelists because you give me amazing segues. Uh, I wanted to uh, talk to about about um, about this kind of area. Uh, Varga, you, you've moved from large corporates to a large start. Can you call it a scale? Do you call it a scale up startup? So you joined uh, 12 years into building a startup. What, would you say this is also one of the ways that you can kind of encourage entrepreneurship by by actually joining the founders who took all the risks? Oh, most of the risks, and, and just helping them take it to the next level. Sure. I mean, first of all, I zigzagged. Uh, I mean, I, when I was young, I founded a company, went to McKinsey, we went to... So I've constantly been... Uh, I'm schizophrenic. Uh, yes, I, I think, it, and I think one of the reasons why uh, tech startups can scale today more so than at least outside of the Silicon Valley than 10 years ago is that 
when you are a, a successful startup, it means that you have proven that somebody is buying your stuff and you have some revenue. Uh, it, is it, it is much more acceptable uh, for people with experience from corporate to actually join you uh, because they see so many examples of people having been successful. Uh, for instance, at UiPath, our chief marketing officer comes from uh, Hewlett Packard. Our CFO comes from GE. Uh, so these are the caliber of people uh, that uh, uh, a Romanian startup can attract today that I don't think was the case, I'm just going to say, 10 years ago. Uh, so uh, because the environment has changed, there are examples of success. Failure is no longer such a social stigma as it was before. And if it doesn't work, people go back to corporate. The, 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 uh, I think between... Uh, startups or innovation and corporate, uh, the, the doors are much more open than they used to be. Uh, people do hire now in big corporation people from startup because they want a bit of spirit of innovation. So, which is, I think, uh, beneficial for both uh, uh, sides of the party. Okay. Peter, I, I feel like you wanted to say something before I can cut you off. So, just building on that, I, I would just say that. I see uh, in, a, in a startup you have three main phases. The, the initial startup phase is when you search for the product market fit, <laughs> then when you start scaling, and then when you already have the scale. And they are all very different. And for example, myself, I'm not great at the first stage. That's a, it's like it's ex extremely painful because I have lots of ideas and then when you look around the room and there's no one, you have to do it, right? And then you spend the night and then it's crap idea, then you're pissed about yourself. But I'm very good at the, the middle part and I've done, you know, I've also been in, at McKinsey two and a half years. I always say that half a year too long. Two years would be actually enough. And so I, I can do the last two stages and that's, that's where I'm strong. And as you mentioned, so for example, what we, what we, were, able to, we were able to hire uh, an ex-CEO of Raiffeisen Bank who is now running our financial institutions uh, piece. And this is exactly something that would, was not possible. And for him, uh, you know, money-wise, he's worse off but he sees it as an amazing opportunity for himself to learn stuff. And there's a carrot, you know, if, if it really becomes big, then he can be actually better off. But still, it's, it's a, it's a trade-off. So, you know, it, it gives you a lot. And then uh, last point that I had was, when you look at uh, Silicon Valley, it was actually built on two big waves. The first one was the traitorous aid, the people that you know started the Silicon Valley, the chips, and you know the Intel uh, actually established the culture. And then you had uh, the the PayPal mafia. So from PayPal, uh, the the guys that uh, that left PayPal have already built nine billion dollar companies, and then people from those companies have built at least ten billion dollar companies already. And we were looking into this effect a lot. And one of the things that, um, that Joe Lonsdale, who is one of the PayPal Mafia guys said, is he said like it's just about two things. Uh, extremely talented people concentrated in one room and then loyalty to each other. They're still helping each other. And we're trying to foster that in Exponia. And I believe that you know, through seeing the success and being extremely transparent, other people would be able to build that. And I see, you know, for example, UiPath, there will definitely be other people you know, from um, that would be motivated by that success and inspired that would be able to do other stuff. The, this panel just keeps keep, keep on giving because I wanted to also kind of touch on the on the Assyrian entrepreneurship kind of a concept. And Grzegorz, you've, 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 you've already told us you, you founded two companies who are on the stock exchange and now you're on a, on a third one in a completely different space, in space. Uh, can you tell us more about why would you go back to starting from zero like for me personally, when I when I think about going back to the times when I I was the guy, I was like I had all the ideas, but then you know I had to all deliver them. Also, I don't I'm not super excited. Uh, <coughs> from my perspective, from my uh, history, I started with uh, uh, my first company with, uh, when I have when I when I was uh, 18 years old. Uh, I really enjoyed the, enjoying starting the companies. This phase, first phase is for me, it's like a really enjoyable uh, part. Uh, I, I, I really like to look uh, what people will enjoy, uh, what, uh, what I can sell uh, in the future. And uh, the second part of scaling is also a really good uh, uh, place to exercise uh, my skills. Uh, so. 
Mm, I decide to move uh, from my previous company to the next one when uh, when my company was uh, worth something about uh, 70 million dollars and uh, mm, I decided to go to hardware you know I was uh, I, I enjoy games uh, I really like to play I play a lot but uh, you know uh, space and uh, uh, I think that the uh, human race uh, should go in the space, so we, we should colonize it. Uh, I watch a lot of uh, great movies, I, I, you know, I play a lot of uh, really nice games and I want to do this, I want to uh, change the world and uh, make uh, movement in, uh, in, this, uh, in the history. Okay, so so when, when when you guys talk about this, I feel like we 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 ha you know Paul said we have the the people are there. We need to give them space to do that. They need to be obviously passionate about what what they what what, what they want to do. Um, so I I think we have you know a little bit of a of common common understanding here. And I want to do like a quick segue into into funding. And then Roman, if you could well, help. I think there is one okay, one additional ahead. point that you need. Like you know, go ahead. I think you need people. You need passion and so on but you also need the market no? and I think uh, that's uh, one of the reasons why um, some startups succeed others don't it's like you know um, and uh, I will just add to this element that a lot of the uh, startups that we see and that we work with um, some are great in the technology but they don't really address the need uh, and I agree with everything that's been said it's like you know there needs a success success brings success and so on but I think like, you know, for startups, it's also important to understand who is their client, what business need they address, and like, you know, how they're going to make money at the end. I mean, this is, sounds like kind of business one-on-one. -on -one. So, so is that what we're trying to say is that for, 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 you know, the, for the ecosystem to thrive, we need to find a way to educate folks in some way also on, on, on those ideas? Is this something that comes from experience? Is this something that's... Well, I think it comes from... I think at the end of the day, there needs to be people who will start buying their products. No? And uh, I think that's right. the role of the large corporations as well. Of course, like, you know, the retail market is there, but the large corporations, the government and so on, they have a big role in creating the initial stage of the growth and, and, uh, and, and, the, and, and pretty much providing the initial, the initial um, contracts to those startups. So I, I wanted to again make a segue into into funding, but before I want to talk about you know the, the best way to fund yourself is obviously for clients, right? So how do you find those first clients? And is is one of the issues that we have here in the region is that, and I think this is a, some of it is a Polish perspective where where you think about you know this, it's a bigger mark, big enough market, so maybe we can focus on this market, and then there's other countries where you already know that this is market is not enough, so you have to go outside. But is is there um, do, do we have a disadvantage because we are not able to sell, sell on the local market at a scale that will allow us to become a unicorn? That's, I guess that's a long question. It's like, how, how can we overcome this disadvantage that, you know, if you're based in Silicon Valley and you focus on your local market, it's, it's, it's a huge market and you don't really have to, you know, go out to become a unicorn. You have a, a lot of different uh, examples. I think it's impossible in every single country in, in Central Eastern Europe to be able to do that. And we have a volunteer. Yeah, we, we, we turn this perceived disadvantage into an advantage. Uh, for us, any market outside of Romania was going to be bigger. So uh, from day one, we, 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 we literally went everywhere. Uh, and we went with everywhere with true humility. And that's a point I want to emphasize. We're extremely successful in Japan. That's an unheard of yeah, um, for a startup to be successful in Japan. When our American VCs look at us, they say usually they start 80% of their sales in the US and then eventually a little bit to Europe and, and Japan is kind of the last. And the reason is because we came to Japan, us being Romanian, and said, well, we know nothing. We have a technology. We were lucky to hire a very talented Japanese manager who says, you tell us how to do. And you don't, it's amazing, they're still telling us, he said, we had never seen a tech company coming with such humility. We're used to the, I'm sorry, I don't mean to be a jibe. To, <laughs> we're, sure, we're used to having the Americans coming to us and telling us how it's going to be in Japan. And so we went everywhere with the same 
not fake humility, humility really because, hey, we had nothing at home, right? So, uh, and we wanted to conquer the world. So I think you can, as always in life, you can turn your disadvantage if you have the right mindset into actually your strength. So Th this is amazing. Like Paul, do you, do you I see mean, as well? I agree with the disadvantage. I mean, you look at some of the best ecosystems in the world. They're small countries. Singapore are doing amazing, right? Estonia, Finland, Sweden doing amazing, right? Yeah, <laughs> it's like they have to go outside from day one. So yeah, your small local market. So yeah, Poland sometimes isn't a trap, right? Thirty-eight million people. You could build a huge company there, but yeah, it's, it kind of hits a wall sometimes, right? And so I think it's, it goes back to educating people. Hey, maybe going outside is a good option and having the confidence and you know having kind of idols to look up to right but yeah i agree so i just add that the the important thing is also to understand that the local markets can be you know it's much easier to get the first customers but you need to be very careful what field you go into because there are certain companies that are extremely innovative globally and then there are others that are not and if you build something on a company that is not innovative globally you know, then you go elsewhere and you get a slap, right? And that's it. And But when you look at it, for example, e-commerce, uh, you know, uh, Czech Republic is the most competitive market in the world. Poland is the second biggest, you know, most competitive market. You don't have any global company truly successful in those, in those markets. And now, if you start working with those companies, what they do is really amazing. That's why the global competitors cannot really compete. And so if you start and develop something for them, then it's relevant in the US, in the UK, and elsewhere. You have the same thing in other, other areas. So for example, uh, many CEE banks are actually got awards for being the best. So there's a bank from Slovakia that had the best mobile application. You know, uh, we, we discussed OTP. So like, there's quite a lot of things that are happening in, in this field. And if you choose well, then it is easier to get there and you know, create something, but you have to be also very careful. Can, can I just quickly, uh, before we go further, uh, because we had this quick conversation before the panel and you said something that was very interesting to me. I don't wanna, you, you gave me an example and I don't wanna say which company it was, but you said about a company who who had, that, that priced itself from the local markets by, by being very, very cheap and then failed to go outside and you, you kind of uh, your, your your judgment for this was like this this is something that, that kind of killed or potentially going to kill them in the future. Can can you expand on this because I just, I think it was a very interesting point so of it, view. It goes to the point that Paul just mentioned that basically they fell into the trap of saying okay Poland is big enough let's be successful here and they were extremely aggressive on pricing and because of that their margin wasn't big big enough and in SaaS business um, you cannot survive. You know, there's, they say that uh, below 10 million, the business cannot be sustainable. You know, it just doesn't work. And so you have to scale really fast above 10 million, and then you can already build relatively easily a profitable company and sustain it long term, or you can decide to grow. But in between, you basically you have to grow or you die. Now, they focused on the, the local market. They, they became very dominant but they were very aggressive with pricing and the market wasn't big enough to support. I don't think they even have like three million. And so with that, you know, because they don't have success elsewhere, investors look at them and say, oh, how do we know that you will be successful elsewhere? Maybe it's just your context, whatever. And so they really struggle. So that's the trap that Paul mentioned. I think it's a super, super interesting point. Maciek, you, you were eager to... So I, was, I wanted because we're segueing and zigzagging a little bit. So I wanted, yeah, it's, there's I no structure. I lost completely because everybody's going in different directions. Yeah. Sorry, too many I people. To, I want to go back to what Varga said on the on the talent pool. I think uh, my thinking about you know having seen quite a few successful people building businesses, I think the one of the challenges is you know you need to decide what you do at certain moment. When is your time to go or move? Move away and build a team that will run it for you, or you move up and then create space for people to actually help you to, to run it. So these are the two elements. One of the barriers that I've seen in a scale that business that are trying to scale up and, and work internationally, I think bringing talent to Warsaw or Bucharest is actually not as easy as it sounds when you said it. Maybe if you have a, a, a true unicorn in the, in the making and it's 100% certain, you can, but I've seen. Sorry? They are not in Bucharest. Yes, well, sorry, sorry, in, uh, yeah, in, in Romania. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, then, yeah. Yes, but, but the point here is, uh, it's not easy to bring the talent over uh, to Central Eastern Europe. I think that's one, uh, that's one of the barriers we'll have, uh, to have people who can help to take the, these businesses to, to the next level. So that's one barrier. 
thinking about building uh, a unicorn here. And the second one, I think there is a little bit of an issue with funding. So I've been watching the market early stage. That was a desert in Poland for 15 years. You, you could only go and beg entrepreneurs to give you 100,000 euros. I'm very happy to see you know VC developing so rapidly over the last uh, few years. So that's a great thing. But <laughs> but at the same time, I see some people have great businesses, and it's very hard hard to fundraise from Poland if you want 20 million euros or 40 million euros or 50. If you get to the point where you want to scale up, that's a big challenge coming out of uh, out of uh, out of this region and that gap hasn't been breached yet. So I think we have a very young VC industry that can do a million to three million euros, but then I think there is a gap, and there's quite a few businesses that I see in the making that may not get there unless they find money elsewhere. Maybe just, just on this um, yeah, element of funding. I, I think funding is critical, and I think you need, uh, you need also the right quality of fund funders um, yeah, that will support the entrepreneurs in the development phase. They need to understand those phases. I think. Um, what is happening right now, and I, I'm actually very happy about it, that a lot of the VCs with established teams who understand exactly the cycles from the, like, you know, from many years of doing this, are starting investing in Poland, and uh, we actually supported several, uh, s several of those. Just to mention, like you know, NEA, uh, Koshla, and so on. They they started entering Poland on in specific investments that we also helped them source, and I think. This will be one of the um, ways to develop the market. It's not enough to have, you know, VC pool local on the market. I, I would disagree that this is like, you know, the, the only prerequisite. You also need to have skills of investors who understand how to build these companies. I'll, I'll just add to it. Our experience was that, um, you know, when we were below 1 million, nobody wanted to talk to us, like, you know, from the global players. So we only had to talk locally. And you can, you know, you can relatively easily raise up to, I would say, probably 2 million, maybe 3. So that's something that's possible, that, that was possible in the region. Then there was a gap. And you know, bridging that gap wasn't easy because you don't have the, the money to create a big runway, so you cannot be really bullish. So we were quite lucky, you know, with with our investors. So we we were able to go really full in because we knew that there will be another round. We so we didn't have to create the buffer, but it was it was still quite tough. Then when you get above five, people start to care, and then when you were above ten everyone bombards you like it's constant like i sometimes get from one vc they will get send me four cold mails in one week it's 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 really like crazy and like before they wouldn't even respond to our emails right the and so, so the same guys yes and it's so it's it's really like and and one of the things that uh, that i would want to thank uipa for because currently for us it's extremely easy to talk to anyone i can just send them an email i just put in three numbers and and they immediately respond because they sense there might be another UI path, right? And so so, so it's an example, right? So it's an ex it's an extremely important example because all the top investors that we talk about talk talk with um, they they know them, and it helped a lot. So it opened the the back end of the of the market tremendously, and now there are quite a lot of uh, funds that were also successful, not just but also like UI path. So for example, Credo, they they returned more than three x their entire fund from the UiPath investment. And because of that, now they're e it's easy for them to get money. Then there are other funds that, that manage to, to secure funding. So I believe that the, the funding gap is closing significantly exactly because of these successes. So thanks a lot. Paul, do you want to add Yeah, to just the... chip in a little bit. I mean, yeah, it's about education and it's about promoting the region, right? Like I was just in Sweden before I came here. Every single Swedish VC I had lunch or dinner with is like, Paul, can you open up Poland for me. Could you just connect me to people, right? And that's all of our job, right? We have to go out and kind of wave our respective flags or whatever it is and say, come in. We have to be amazing hosts, right? We have to say, come in. We're going to show you a good time. We're going to show you all the cool companies. And then they're going to come, right? And they, Sh yeah. Should we have like a, like a Polish house, like in Davos, for example? Like, yeah, that's, would that's, this that's be a helpful? pretty good idea. I don't know who thought of that one, right? But yeah, yeah exactly. But, but yeah, but this is only two years old, right? Yeah. A couple years ago, this was not happening, right? And so more and more initiatives like this is awesome, right? And I just want to see and that's the moment for me to do a bit of propaganda. Yep. <laughs> to, yeah. that's, that's we, for we, everybody. Like, we we created at UiPath last year, we created the Automation Awards for the CE region to help uh, startups specifically in the automation to give them uh, the visibility, money, as well as access to our clients. So we're going to do the award this year again. Stay tuned. 
Maciek, you also are in this space of kind of a ecosystem building. It's 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 for also kind of in some way connecting startups and corporates. Is is this something that you think it's important to also kind of help not only your clients who are, as I understand, are corporates, but also those startups and, and the ecosystem as a as a whole. Yes, and there, there there are many takes on 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 that view. I wanted to start from from what we discussed before on funding and scaling, uh, and maybe something that is maybe a little bit less sexy, uh, which is uh, actually you don't have to scale. Actually, we, Victor, we had uh, a year ago. I don't know if you remember a discussion about you know moving uh, beyond Poland and do it as fast as you can. Uh, uh, don't wait, and I said no. Uh, maybe that was more more because my previous job was flying a lot. I, I worked on on uh, 33 different markets and I really was fed up and I wanted to stay in Warsaw for a while. And uh, But today I really believe that there is a good moment to go out, uh, but there is a lot of space uh, to grow just in Poland. For example, in Poland, country that is big enough and PZU is a, is a good example. Uh, and that's our model, that's how, we, uh, that's how we work. It's very specific, it's a B2B to C model. So we're thinking about uh, a specific product that we believe is good for end client consumers. And we go to big corporations who have access to them, so we can scale this product through these uh, 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 through these companies. And if you look at Pizza 2, I, I might be wrong, but I think it's 18 million clients right now. So imagine uh, imagine the market Maybe. of 18 million or 20, I don't know, uh, but a lot, a lot of millions of clients in one place. Uh, so one good contract can secure a, a really good uh, growth of one just company. And that's what we really do. We're trying either to build a company that can do that, or we're trying to look for a company that uh, has a really good product that can fit PZU or any other uh, big, uh, uh, big player on the market. And to, we believe that uh, that that is the way to do it and uh, once you grow to the point where you are secure on your own market and polish market is big enough to 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 guarantee this secure uh, this secure feeling maybe not in all businesses but uh, in many and then you have a good base to go out so Roman, before you answer that, because I think that there's a you were talking about the trap in kind of SaaS and and just kind of scale in this kind of but like, there's a lot of people who talk about traps when trying to partner up with large corporates. Like you, you become dependent, the process can be long, uh, and it can fall, uh, fall out you know, in any given moment, and this can kill small, small organizations. Can you, like, when, when you talk about this, can you also sure. say, like, how do Maybe you Maybe ju just this? a comment on, the, on like, you know, whether staying in Poland and just focusing on one market makes sense. Uh, I think if you look at technology, this would be like missing, missing opportunities, because the incremental cost of technology, like, you know, is very low. So once you enter the market, and if we talk about technologies and building unicorns in technology, then I think um, being global makes total sense. I would not even focus on the region, but it's like you know on uh, on, uh, on on key large markets. But is working with large corporate stuff? Yes, it is. It's uh, I think. Uh, for various reasons, one uh, one reason is like you know the the corporates very rarely understand how startups operate, uh, and sometimes they can procedures they can create procedures that kills a startup, like you know in the process of developing the first contract. Um, it's <laughs> we've we've got this experience uh, like you know internally, so it changed completely the way we operate with with startups. Uh, they don't go through the lengthy uh, procurement procedures. It's like you know the. We do it very quick. Um, yeah, we also allow some more space for mistake and testing and so on. And it's like, you know, we also provide liquidity to startups. So it's like, you know, they know exactly how much they're going to make if they enter into the, into the agreement. Uh, but it's like, you know, once the product is tested, uh, I believe that, uh, you know, the, they, the startups should get prepared to, to work as a, as a regular provider to, to such companies. And actually, it's like, you know, just a comment on the UA path, because we were one of the first I think, insurance clients at, at some point, and we loved the experience. It's like, you know, the, yeah, the company had absolutely tremendous product, and I think you still do. And, uh, you know, the way uh, you were prepared to work was, uh, I think, that that's... That's how you establish good relationship. They had exactly uh, thought through the process of working with us before they started the contract. So I'll just add to it, two, two, two parts. So most corporates are not distinguishing a startup and Salesforce or whoever. You have to tick all the boxes. And 
for you know for startups you have to time it right you have to first start with companies that don't have all these requirements because they will kill you and you know just fulfilling the requirements you don't have no product right and so you know finding the right type of customer is uh, is is um, could be uh, quite difficult at the beginning but there are also two other traps uh, in there so and we were lucky because we had some some really good advisors who who warned us about that and it enabled us to to sell through but there are two other traps so quite often you would see companies that would be willing to test your product under the condition that you allow them to invest and then you have an investor on on your term sheet that doesn't uh, you know I'm sorry, so in, in your cap table that doesn't really understand the stuff. So every next investment is more difficult. And you know, my you know my last boss before I became an entrepreneur used to say, "You can fix everything but shareholding." <laughs> and so so this is extremely difficult. And then there's one other thing which I saw a few startups really fail because of of this thing, that is, you when you score a really big contract, uh, the the contract can suck all the resources from the company to tailor it for, for them. And then you basically don't have the, any resources to put to developing the product further for other customers and other market. So again, it's extremely important, you know, sometimes it might seem like a huge win, and you know you say okay, a company doubled in size in one contract, but when I saw it as an investor, I was like no, Guys, you shouldn't sign this. Like, it will kill you. And so, this is exactly important. Like, to think about, you know, what does it bring and what does it take. Okay, so I, I think we are slowly uh, moving, and then I, th I feel like you know it wasn't very structured, but we covered uh, people, we covered funding, we covered sc scaling. So I have a, I have a bonus uh, topic that we touched, I think, you know, very very briefly on. But we are here in Davos. It's you know it's all head of states. We had the president, I think, this morning and yesterday uh, evening of president of Poland, and obviously everybody else is here. What's what's the government government's role in setting it up, in 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 helping, in being, maybe not 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 causing any trouble? Like what's what's your take? And I think this is something that everybody has a strong opinion on. So I think this is going to be interesting. Um, on, on the government's role in building an ecosystem that can help breed unicorns? That's, that's the question that's open to everybody to... Everybody so I, I'll have to go re relatively soon, so right. apologies for that. So, but my opinion is that it shouldn't interfere, uh, you know, and like most of the stuff that governments uh, do has, you know, it has so many consequences that they don't intend. So for example, uh, you know, one good idea is usually to build a VC fund, uh, you know, funded by the government. And then you look at it and say, okay, how many talented sales guys do you have in Czech Republic for software as a service? I know one, right? Maybe there are five. So if you create, if you fund companies that shouldn't have been funded because it's not great, you basically suck that resource and then a company that has a good product cannot get that person, right? And so, you know these kinds of uh, things are, are really really difficult and you know then you have corruption in those kinds of funds and, and you start seeing and then you have the guys that you know completely screw up the image of entrepreneurship because you know they they rent a Porsche and run around you know and so like you have to be very careful with, with, with what the governments can do from my perspective like the less intervention the, the better uh, you know but that's that's my perspective okay well, I think it's a pretty complex issue. I would comment maybe just on two. One is the the regulation, and I think in some uh, in some sectors it's um, it's extremely important to have a different view on uh, companies that just start. For example, financial services, very heavily regulated. A lot of like you know the uh, both international and local requirements. Uh, pretty much set at the same level for companies that just enters the market and company that operates on the market. So I think having a little bit uh, less uh, rigid uh, approach in the requirements for the first initial product rounds is critical there to, to s simply start. Uh, the second aspect, which I think is pretty important is like you know the government or like you know the government agencies can be uh, a potential market for startups. Um, yeah. 
if you look at Silicon Valley example, I think a lot of the companies operating there started as um, service providers for military. You know? I think a lot of data analytics and so on goes uh, and, and is funded uh, through some uh, uh, military or other uh, department state departments budgets and uh, they are key first clients of the of such uh, of such um, uh, such companies and maybe the 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 third the third one is like you know yeah, the government in some aspects can also build uh, uh, initial talent pool uh, you know bring good engineers for example military is a great sector uh, i i just looked at i looked in israel several times and a lot of the engineers that are uh, building their companies, started their careers in the uh, in army, like you know, developing military technologies, and then they a commercialized. Lot is, a lot is an understatement. It's probably yeah. all. Um, I think the government actually has a pretty important role, and people forget Silicon Valley was started because we put a lot of money into military and into research in the Bay Area, right? Also, look at the internet. That's DARPA. That's a government function, right? Your industry is space. It was NASA, but then also, who's uh, Elon Musk's biggest client? The United States government, right? So the government can play a really big part in starting an ecosystem, right? All the best markets, Singapore, Israel, United States, the Nordics, they get a lot of money from the government uh, initially. The key thing is they should put money in and then get the hell out of the way eventually, hopefully as fast as possible. They should make themselves redundant. It's like, hey, I don't need you. That's the real goal of the government. Um, so yeah, I think the government can play a huge role, especially like funds and putting money to VCs. I mean, they could be the most potentially patient capital out there because they could wait longer and you put the money and you sit around. So I think that's an important part of the government. But yeah, once it's done, please you know, get along and get out of the way and let these guys do cool stuff. Uh, uh I, w I was invited in, in a government panel, three C's, all the presidents, and they all talked about digital. Three C's is a CEE, regional initiative, they spoke about in the morning. And at the end of the panel, I said, you know, it's all very nice. We are a European CEE-based uh, company. We don't have a single client government of this region. We are serving 25 U.S. federal agencies, zero in this region. And I think that is the biggest, since we're talking about this region, this is the biggest problem. The government, they want to do everything and all of these things, half-ass schemes, excuse my French, but for just to be clients of your local companies, that's the single most important thing you can do. There is no better financing than a good client. Yeah, Matek? I think we're talking about the same things, but uh, kind of to sum it up, uh, personally, I think there are kind of like three layers. Uh, the basic layer is uh, it's not even that. It's just don't make it worse. Uh, if you're an entrepreneur it's already and you have a startup, it's already hard enough. Uh, myself also learned that the hard way. It's really hard enough, so just don't make it worse. Uh, we don't need any funding. Uh, we'll do fine, just don't make it worse. So that's the first layer. Once you get over that, uh, then there's the second layer, help, but not financially. Just make it easy for entrepreneurs to, to work and operate in the country on the regulations, on the paper stuff, the bureaucracy, and all of that. That's enough. That's already enough, and I think that's already an environment that will create a lot of unicorns. And then there's this third layer, uh, which, which is the example of, I don't know, Silicon Valley, also uh, Israel, and also what you mentioned, uh, supporting uh, local companies, your own companies from your own background, your own... Uh, 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 environment uh, with with funding, but the truth is, I think that's the least important. The first two layers are a lot, a lot more important. They will be fine. Just help, help, help them, help them not by not making it worse. But I, I want to before you guys go. I mean, I want to push you a little bit because I think you know. I in kind of personally, I, I kind of agree, but at the same time. We are in a region that's not like we, we, there, there are other regions in the world, including China and the US, and they are actually actively investing. They're actually promoting. You know, they're, they're doing AI. They're doing. They're doing a lot of you know government-led initiatives to push those things forward. So if we are operating on global markets, we're going to be competing with companies who have really strong support from their governments. So I'm, I'm, I'm totally like, you know, in the entrepreneurial spirit, yeah, yeah we're fine, we're going to figure it out, just don't be, you know, on our way. I don't think this is a, a kind of a perspective that, that takes into account that there's a global market where there are other governments who are investing heavily 
in some new technologies? Well, I think maybe just one comment and I uh, shut up. Um, yesterday there was a panel and um, uh, someone commented that if you look at the 100 most valuable companies, technology companies in the world, I don't think none of them is European at the moment. Um, yeah. And uh, I think I think that's uh, and one of the panelists uh, well commented that there would be one uh, one element that could change this completely. It's like you know how you approach data, and because like you know, a lot of the companies are based on data right now, and technology is like pretty much about like data. Uh, and um, I think governments can do a lot, uh, you know, providing infrastructure for data training for new companies. I think there will be a new market completely. And I'll just add on that, we, because we were discussing this quite a lot and I need to run, so, yeah. um, <laughs> uh, so uh, extremely quickly, sorry. Uh, let me turn it off. And, and, and um, So one thing is, in Europe you have more than 80 ways how you calculate VAT. So uh, I'm still an invest. So, but so in the US, US in the US you have, but like, so the, the local complexities, and so for example, in different countries you have different thresholds for when you need to register for VAT in that country. And so it, it creates such complexities. For us, we, uh, as Exponia, we now have, I think, eight European entities. Right, because you have to, because otherwise it's, it's, and so like eight European entities, just, you know, what kind of mess it creates in the back office and, and everything. And so like, you know, simplifying. And so one of the things that I'm, why I'm excited about the growing Europe Business Council is I see the possibility to push on leaders in these countries uh, to try to unify the environment. Because language is one thing, but like the, the, the you know, the legal and tax environment is, it's extremely difficult. Okay. All right, I need to run, so thank you. Thank you, and we, we're going we're gonna to continue without you, sorry. <laughs> uh, thanks. We, we're going to open it up for really quick questions um, in a second, but, but I, I still really want to push you guys a little bit on, on, on this, because I think, I think this, this global perspective, when, when there are other countries that are doing something, we, we need to also think about what can we do as a, as a region? I mean, I agree, it should be a big bet and it should be a wide bet. It should be kind of almost like a spray and pray. Just like, put it out there. Because like, you don't know where it's gonna come from, but you have to just put it in there and you have to kind of believe, right? And that's what happened in the Valley. That's what happened in Israel. They believed, Singapore, I mean, like I said, I've been there for years and then we created a huge fund out there. They put a lot of money into us, right? And they put into, not only us, I think they seeded like 20 other VC funds over a 10 year period, right? That's a lot of money that goes into the companies. I don't think the government should be putting money into the companies. I don't think that's their job, right? But I think they should be putting money into the ecosystem and make it happen. Yeah, and then on top of that, they should be cheerleaders for these companies, right? Every single time a prime minister is going abroad, whatever, and the prime minister Poland did a good job. He talked about CD Projekt. I was happy to hear that. Game industry is awesome. Um, but yeah, like that has to happen all the time, right? Because if you're not selling it, who, yeah, if you're not selling it, who's going to sell it? You have to sell your stuff first. You have to believe in yourself before anyone else is going to buy your stuff. So, so Jagers, do, are you expecting the Polish space or, or the European space agency to kind of help you or are they already helping? Uh, mainly we are working with uh, university right now. Uh, actually, uh, we're cooperating with uh, seven universities. We are building for them, uh, each of them satellites. Uh, I think government should uh, be more involved, Polish government should be more involved uh, in the space sector. Right now, uh, Polish government is a little bit, uh, I don't know, shy. Uh, we're uh, pushing money to uh, Europe, uh, Europe Space Agency uh, because we're thinking that they will spend our money better than we, uh, we can do this. Uh, so I want uh, our government to be more involved uh, to creating uh, space uh, industry in Poland. Uh, this is one thing, and second, uh, uh, right now uh, uh, I'm creating a Polish uh, mission to Mars uh, with uh, 10 different universities from Poland uh, uh, and uh, Virgin Orbit, so... Can you, can you make it like CEE mission to Mars? Yes. Uh, <laughs> 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 Uh, I, actually, I, I think uh, this kind of uh, 
um, venture can uh, grow our region, can show that uh, we are doing really cool stuff and uh, this can be uh, re PR uh, stuff for our government, for our uh, region, for uh, for people which are living here. So uh, I, uh, I, I get my finger crossed that uh, our government be, will be more uh, into space and will be more courage to uh, to spe spend money on uh, uh, on the sector. Yeah. Do you, do you want to add one one more thing before we open up the questions because we yeah. are we're struggling on time a little bit? Yeah, I think um, I think if you look uh, at some of the data, I think we it's not like we have a lot of advantages uh, out of the sea to produce uh, you know pl a lot of unicorns. But I but I think if you look what what can be done, I think uh, there has to be light put into what's going on here. So I agree, it should be at 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 the point in time there should be you know regional companies going outside to promote the region, that's one thing. On the government side, I think uh, it's about allowing the capital to flow. That's one thing, and also the talent. I think I'd like to see more people kind of mixing up in, uh, especially in Poland, that's where I live. I know it's not easy to, to bring the people in uh, with talents and, uh, and have them working in, the, in that industry in particular, not the corporations. Um, I mean, very obvious point, but uh, bureaucracy is something that is killing. I see it with the people. I'm funding companies on my own, and uh, it's just, it can be very dreadful. Not only in Poland, it's the same in the US. If you're trying to go from Poland to US, it's, uh, it's a heck of an issue to open a bank account, yes, if you are a startup. I've seen it with my eyes, it takes three months. But, you know, we should, we should reduce that. And then, and then I think, you know, the region is on trajectory. I think we are in the making still as a, as a place where business can successfully uh, create itself. But uh, I'm, I'm very positive this can be done. All right, Maciek, you just, you were very eager to... Uh, uh, su super quick, uh, just to give a perspective. I think the, the, the support from the government is coming because we've seen it also at the heart. So I think they're just starting. The, uh, uh, as we all probably you know know from our corporate from our uh, like life background is uh, sometimes it's uh, it's better just to go big at once uh, or or nothing and i think that's something that is missing so to invest more and to be more uh, 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 courageous in, in doing this and i i'll give an example uh, at the heart as we mentioned we we not only build startups we also connect startups with corporations and uh, uh, to do so, we have to connect to environments where there are startups, uh, and we do this with uh, with all of different hubs. And uh, one of them is embassies. We work with a lot of a lot of embassies, uh, probably all of the major ones, in, uh, at least those of that are based in Warsaw. And uh, they always fly whole whole planes over to Warsaw, filled with startup CEOs and uh, uh, head of sales, or who, all of them. Uh, Israeli embassy is actually flying twice a year, so they, they really, really try hard. Uh, and I think that's what we really, uh, really need. I really want to s at least have one question, if, if there's anything. If, and, and please make it a short question and allow it for a short answer. There's one question here. So there's just one. And if you can say where where you which person? Go ahead. Uh, but what we believe in the, the EEO, uh, which is funded by USAID program, I, I didn't say it. So um, we believe that p those people who are working currently for um, outsourcing companies, that they will one day they will actually start making their products and their startups. So that is why we are waiting for this moment. So we are developing the ecosystem, blah, blah, blah. But we need what, a question. Yes. What do you think will actually help uh, the CE region to bloom uh, at one moment or at some moment for the quality and quantity of the startups. Thanks. Okay, that's a tough question. What's the what, how do can we boom in one moment instead of waiting and you know maybe next year, maybe in two years? Who wants to take this one? Well, from my perspective, and I think um, uh, success brings success. If you demonstrate that such things are possible, UAPath. Like, you know, a lot of the gaming companies. I keep my fingers crossed for Grzegorz with his space uh, company because it's like, you know, it's unique 
if we show that it's like, you know, these things really happen and they're made and, you know, exited by people who, like, you know, a lot of this te technology, technological people know and it's like, you know, they, they trust this really happened, I think this, this will open up um, a lot of the flow of people to the uh, to this space. That's at least my, my personal belief. Great. So I think we are super optimistic. Uh, we, we, we don't know if it's going to be super fast or do we need to wait. But the, what, what we definitely need to do is, is my, my takeaway at least for this is uh, continue to promote and continue to sell the region because we are the champions basically. Everybody who's sitting here and most of you guys who are sitting there. Sorry, we just we, we are we are telling out of time. Um, that that's one thing. The other the other thing is 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 how do we find those people? Is also they they also need to f see those examples. So we need to kind of somehow champion is also inside, right? Yep. Um, and I think the, the the third thing would be for me at least to continue to do initiatives like this that are you know also somehow funded by by our uh, uh, co-panelists and and I think you know, we we all owe you uh, you know f huge thanks to be able to to be here. And also, you know, kind of promote the region and, and talk about how we can how we can this, uh, how can you expand on, on on what we've done so far. So thank you so much uh, for for joining the panel. Thank you so much for for joining us. And um, I think we need to close almost right now. So thank you so much. Thank you.